Tarzan of the Apes. Brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' amazing book. Well, a hut is certainly more than I expected to find in this. Hi, Joe. Professor, keep Jane outside a moment. What's the matter? Helen. What are you two whispering about? Oh, oh nothing, my dear. Uh, just a moment. Uh, you see, Jane, we... Uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, in uh, simple language, my dear, the previous inhabitants of this hut... Poor souls evidently met their end together with the inevitable result that... That their bodies are still here? Oh, no, no, no. It must have been years ago. Then, then what you are trying to say is that there are two skeletons and... Three, to be precise. There's a baby in this crib. Oh, how terrible. Oh, the poor thing. To think of them all alone. Well, now, oh, don't be upset. It happened a long time ago. You just sit down outside. It'll only take a few minutes. I'm not squeamish. Not after our experiences of the past few days. All right. Uh, you can put things in order. Uh, if that is, if you don't mind. Just put them where you want them. You I know. understand. Get ready to set up housekeeping in our new home. Uh, that's the idea. As long as you can see the humorous side of things, well, I'll have no fear. Ah, Philander. Yes? What? Your attention and your advice. Delighted. Uh, Take a look at this uh, baby skeleton. Ah, extremely short tibia and uh, elongated radius. A skull, Philander. Don't be so obtuse. And I see decidedly anthropoidal characteristics. Amazing. You don't suppose... Hey, will you come here? Where do you want your mucky old book? Uh, coming, my dear. Uh, say nothing to the others, Philander. We don't want... All right, all right, uh, all right. Now, 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 what is it, dear? You said something about book. Yes, here they are. Where do you want me to put them? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I, I think this cupboard is as good a place as any. Well, that's where I'm going to put the canned goods, and I don't... Well, my dear, I don't think either the canned goods or the books will suffer if they are placed together. Does anyone know where that pressure lamp was put? It's getting dark. While we haven't an inexhaustible supply of fuel, still we might as well use it tonight. I think. In fact, I'm sure it's in the same box as the canned sausage. At least that would account for the remarkably strange taste of the sausage. <laughs> well, apparently you're right. Here it is. Oh, that's much better. Well, it's certainly going to be a treat to sleep for once in something like a house again. And, Cecil, I'd feel much safer with the door closed. Oh, uh, cool. <laughs> Tarzan swings himself leisurely along the upper jungle terrace. A pale moon... Send streaks of shimmering silver across the waters of the bay. The swaying trees cut fantastic shadows on the spongy moss a hundred feet below. Though Tarzan's body moves leisurely, his mind races. He's watched Clayton and the party unload their boat and move their gear to his Tarzan hut. And strangest of all, these M.E.N. have not fought. Tarzan stops. He leans forward, listening. The sounds are coming from the beach. He glances toward the hut. The lamp glows dimly in the distance. He pulls himself higher, branch by branch, to the crest of an acacia. Now he can see, down on the fringe of the jungle close by the sea, a light gleams. And a light means M-E-N. Instinct, reason, telling that these men are dangerous, are from the thing that floats upon the water. With lightning speed, he drops, limb by limb, down, down into the inky blackness of the denser foliage. His body swaying, his strong fingers steel-like, certain of their hold, grasping the branches with ape-like accuracy. His feet touch the leafy carpet, and skirting the treacherous, gnarled branches of a wait-a-bit thorn bush, he glides through the clump of bamboo. Tarzan stops. He sees the pirate crew gathered about Yant, a big man with heavy, beetling eyebrows. The big man waves his arms and points angrily at the ground. A little man detaches himself from the group, picks up a thing like a club. The big man doubles up his fist, shakes it in the little man's face. The little man swings. The big man steps back, but too late. 
The club-like thing crushes the big man to the ground. You, you killed him, Snipes. I meant to. What's the use of the likes of him? All he could do was holler. He couldn't work, but he could navigate. What not the word about silent a blooming ship? Well, never mind. Let's get this treasure up. This place gives me the creeps. Blooming hard ground. Awful what I said. Snipes, look there. Through the trees, there's a light. Strike me pink appetite. That balmy old professor and his gang, eh? Now what's the matter? A ship. See a light bearing down on our port bow. King. Yeah? Grabbed up their lamp. Give Harry the signal to douse our running light. That's that blooming cruiser what we sighted the other day. No use, Harry, dousing the running lights. With that lantern of the professor's gang up shore there, shining plain as day for them frogs to see? Mm, you're right, King. Here. Taint so far. You take your rifle and put out the professor's light. Now, look here, Snacks. I know you. I don't care how you does it. Put out that light. Crashing through the broken twigs, stumbling over roots and vines, cursing under his breath, King starts off through the underbrush. Tarzan follows. The ape man doesn't understand the words, but the meaning, the meaning is that S-H-E is in danger. Swiftly Tarzan swings his lithe body along from tree to tree with scarcely the rippling of a leaf. He makes no sound that would betray his presence to the stumbling, cursing man below. Now he's between King the Pirate and the little clearing where she is. He waits. Tense, he crouches on a low-hanging limb. From his right hand, he dangles a length of grass rope, roofed at the end. King is coming. What a contrast. The clumsy sailor stumbling, crashing through the brush, while Tarzan, graceful, sleek, lord of the jungle, waits. The pirate is nearly under the tree where Tarzan crouches, ready for instant action. Now, King is under the tree. Tarzan throws his grass rope. He settles over the man's head and shoulders. The man yells. With a mighty heave, Tarzan yanks the mutineer into the air. King's arms are pinned to his side. He struggles, kicks, curses. Tarzan shakes him like a terrier shakes a rat. Back and forth, back and forth. King is terrified. Is Tarzan going to kill him? Tarzan gathers the sailor into his arms. Swiftly, he winds the rope around the man's body. King cannot move hand or foot. Tarzan leans the sailor against the tree. King's eyes almost start from his head when he sees the brawny, brown figure of the ape man. Slowly, deliberately, Tarzan draws his knife from its sheath. He points to the cabin and threateningly, significantly, draws the knife across his throat. King's teeth chatter. He cannot talk, but he understands and vigorously shakes his head. Tarzan, satisfied that the man will leave the hut alone, picks him up by the scruff of the neck and tosses him across his shoulder, and without effort, grasps a vine and swings to a branch. He balances himself a mere fraction of a second, then leaps into space. To miss either footing or grip means that two bodies will go hurtling down through the crashing branches to certain death a hundred feet below. But with a skill surpassing that of the great apes, his practiced hand and sure foot carry him branch after branch, vine after vine, soundlessly, swiftly, closer and closer to the pirates. He stops. He hears the ring of metal on metal, a shovel striking the treasure chest. Dying, mate. The map's all right. Here's our ruddy treasure chest right now. A good size, too. It's even up. <laughs> Get hold of that end, Chunky. Even now. You, Bill, grab the other corner. Lay me now. Oh, she won't move. Wish King was back. Uh, must be a million quid in us. Take four of us to budge her. Honey, mate. That French cruise is getting closer. We'd better dig another hole. Dump the chest in. Get aboard and blow before the cruiser leaves, too. And leave the treasure? Yes. Give that 
through their overalls as in searches. It's goodbye treasure and the yard arm for all of us. Then why move the box? That cruiser's getting too close. Don't forget, mighty. This professor bloke might have another map. No. We got time. She can't see without light. Now, see you tomorrow, me hearties.